Do you know the number one cause of why businesses fail? It's when people start investing, putting in hard-earned money in a business right after they get an inspiring business idea for a good product or service. For instance, just a block away from here, there's a store space that would be occupied by a tenant selling food and after a few months, they would close down only to be rented out by another tenant with a good food place idea, but which would close down again after a few months. It's one food place after another, and all of them fail, one after another. Why? Because they started with the idea of good-looking and good-tasting food from the special recipe that they have perfected. And since it was a good idea, they rented and opened the food place to sell it. After all, how can people not want to buy yummy food, right? especially if they are located along a very busy road where the neighbors are mostly people who can afford good food. Just a block away are stores like McDonald's and Jollibee, which are always full. And there are also other fine dining places nearby. The conclusion that they made is that there is a market, right? I would make the same conclusion. So, these tenants would spend millions in setting up their store only to find that not many people would come in and buy. Why? It's because they did not take the right step in starting that business. So, what's the right step, Mami Yen? Well, with any business, always start with your understanding of the customer base. This is a crucial step in simplifying your marketing efforts. Now, if you have already started your business without doing this step and you are finding it difficult to get customers in, then you can go back and do it now. Catch up before it's too late, okay? Going back to the food place, do you know what the problem with that place was? Simple. Parking. McDonald's and Jollibee, as well as the other successful food places nearby, they all have adequate parking. And all this little store has is a space for one single car. It's located in a very, very busy and narrow one-way street, and there is no parking area anywhere near it. So if only any would-be tenant noticed it, they could have chosen a better place with more parking, right? Now, Mami N, all is lost for this current tenant. You may have that question. Well, I would say not really. What can probably work for them is to turn it into a delivery store instead. This will work well if they can have, say, two or three motorbike riders parked outside to convey that identity to passersby. Something like the model of Domino's Pizza might work. So that was point number one, to know your customers well. Once you know your customers well inside and out, then it's like having a, a treasure map to success. Yes, the customers of the area know and love good food for that little store, but they don't walk around. Just by looking at the empty sidewalks in the neighborhood, you will get the insight that they come out of their cars. So parking is crucial. Create meaningful connections with the people in your community and tailor your marketing to their needs so that you will know what to do. So to connect with your customers, start by creating detailed customer personas. Understand their demographics, preferences, pain points, and their aspirations. This will serve as the foundation of your marketing strategy. Now, studies reveal that businesses that cater to customer needs experience higher customer loyalty and word-of-mouth referrals. You saw that in the example of the food place a while ago. They don't go around in cars, and so if you don't have parking, what would happen? But could it be that they also sometimes order through food deliveries? How will you know? What you can do is to count the food delivery motorcycles that pass by at different hours of the day and different days of the week. That should give you a deeper understanding about your customers and if a delivery model would work or not. 